All right, a uh, quick video to address an issue some people are having with um, tab generation. And this usually comes in situations where, you know, you have a situ something where, okay, this is a four-sided polygon, these are triangles, right? And um, Raya Grasshopper kind of loses count of, you know, vertices, basically, when you have, you know, um, polygons with different number of sides, when they're not all the same. Something like this happens. And so um, you'll get a a situation where um, where grasshopper is supposed to do this but then it decides to kind of like go over there or shoot somewhere else essentially those lines and um, it can look a lot worse than this um, and so the general idea is that to kind of insert these two guys the green highlighted green ones a shift component and a number slider in between um, the ends of your inputs where you would typically kind of go straight from here to here to draw the lines, okay? And um, if you do it correctly, uh, it would probably fix things in, so it should look like this, right, in your case. Now, I'm going to drop in a file that actually someone sent me that highlights this, and you'll kind of see his lines are doing that, right? And so this generally should have been connecting there, and it looks like it's jumping one, two, right? Basically kind of rotating or turning uh, two uh, segments over, right? So that's essentially the the counting um, of the vertices has shifted by two, right? So in that case, this case, what we do, it's a really simple fix. We just uh, put in a shift list component. So double click, type shift, pull it in you know, the shift list component. These guys kind of live over here under set list uh, down here, right? Um, and it's actually this guy, right? Um, and essentially we go we're kind of inserting it in, in between, right? So this goes here, that goes there, right? We insert it in between. And you see it's shifted back one already, but we need to shift another. So we need to put in number slider, zero smaller than, let's say, use three for now. Uh, this is an integer number slider. You can always kind of change it if you want to. And we'll put this in right there. And uh, I'll highlight the line, uh, but as you can kind of see, like as I change this, the display changes and actually that's what we're looking for okay so that's a simple one right there that's the fix for these guys right usually these should be the same right so for the next like line segment that you're drawing um, we're kind of drawing in these guys right so this should be end to end generally as the same thing and it'll probably have the same problem right and so you can kind of see yeah it's the same thing it's kind of moving two vertices over instead of connecting to the one closest to it, okay? So, we can do the same thing, we'll just copy this over, right? And reconnect it to the end um, over there and replace this, right? And it, because it's already set at two, then this actually just works out right away. And there you go. And then from this point on, right, these two are basically kind of the same as what we had before in the example. You just have to eh, sometimes arrange things a little bit so you can kind of see it better. And that should be that. And you can kind of continue all the rest of the buildup or uh, just as I had done in the example. Okay, so this is the intelligent way to kind of deal with this, right? Um, on the flip side, sometimes if you just have ones that are just uh, sometimes like they're kind of too weird or too crazy and just like don't work. Okay, that's my unrolled B rep, right? This is kind of what you would get, okay? And um, if you kind of go forward and say, well, let me just get to the point where I am thinking about offsetting things. And so you can kind of see those are the offset lines, right? Um, sometimes you just can't get uh, things to align properly. So you just get to the point where you have all the scaled lines like this, right? Um, and you just bake these lines, okay? So what you should be left there with is this, right? You just have the lines on the outside. You have these, right? And these, if they don't have outlines, then you can just like select all your poly surfaces individually. Or um, the smart way is to use this, right, uh, down here, and just do select poly surfaces. Well, actually, no, that's not selecting the select surfaces here. I would just select all these, right? You can join them if you want to. Um, and then 
uh, use the dupe face border command right here, right? To get all the face borders, okay? Now move that out. Now you have these, okay? Now you'll obviously have to kind of do a little bit of editing, but at this point um, you can kind of do it manually if you really like, for whatever reason, just couldn't get things to line up, right? And um, so, but obviously eventually these do manually, but you have to join these back, right? So these would kind of be the outer edge, uh, outer cut lines. And so <clears throat> you would make a new cut layer here, red, and a new etch layer here, make it blue. Okay, uh, and everything that was on the outside, right, the, all that stuff's red. And everything on the inside, right, uh, is blue. Now, I will point out one thing like this method, right, because these are both two closed poly surface, right? So um, if I just put them in on the etch layer, that means the laser would double etch this. It would go over this twice, okay? So to solve this, right, what you can do is essentially try to create select all of your uh, closed polylines, explode them all, right? So they're all single line segments. Now you have these duplicates, right? So select duplicate, select, select dupe, right? So you actually select the things that have doubled up and then delete them once. And then these should all be on their own now, okay? So now you can, you know, I mean, you can kind of try select. Well, I'm just lazy, so I'll just move everything to the etch layer change object and then kind of like try to bracket these individual guys best I can not that right so these are all ones that uh, should be on the cut layers um, now obviously this will only work if you have a less kind of like complex and less involved uh, sort of polyhedra, right? And then you have to obviously would kind of go in and just like add, like change your layer to this and just add in all the missing line, line segments that you would originally have Grasshopper do for you. Whoops. Now, as a final step and check, I would actually just go around and join all these. And you see I kind of missed one there, but I can kind of always go back and edit any of these line segments. Right? It helps me catch mistakes like that. So this I can always just pull over. And this I can always just pull over. Right? Um, it's always a kind of good way to check your own work, make sure things line up and join correct. Okay, so now you have this and you have this and this should be what you get. Um, this is kind of a last resort if uh, all that else fails and just like can't get it to work. Um, obviously this is kind of like the manual uh, more labor-intensive way uh, and wouldn't work for something that's much more complex. Okay, all right.